present we use a kiln, the Iwasaki charcoal kiln. Why do we use a kiln? Uh, it is much easier in a very short time we can produce charcoal in a very efficient way and uh, the advantage of the Iwasaki kiln is uh, you can collect the wood vinegar and the wood vinegar we use in the garden we mix it with the irrigation water and use it in the garden the Iwasaki kiln is a small kiln that can be made in any workshop it's made with old uh, oil drums it's very cost effective uh, very easy to handle and for a small place like ours that's about ideal I would say the Iwasaki charcoal kiln consists of two parts for that you will need two barrels two oil barrels of uh, a minimum tear of 20 to 22 uh, tear you will have a solid barrel the burner is made by cutting the barrel in half you can see you will cut the barrel nicely in half it will be about 41 or 42 centimeters and uh, then in the front here this is the front part you cut an opening about 20 by 20 these are 20 by 20 centimeters uh, what you need to do then is to have some metal plates and make the entry which uh, you will weld one plate on this side one on this side one on this side and close them so that you have here an entry like you see on this or there uh, where you can put in the firewood because here you will burn wood right then once that has been made you have to go to the carbonization chamber carbonization chamber is a full drum again one oil drum and first you cut out one small piece here this is about nine centimeters gap you cut this out and weld a small angle iron there then the back side here in the back side there is a small hole where the chimney will come and this is about a diameter of 10 centimeters the top side you will have to cut out some lids make some lids and uh, a cutout this cutout is about um, 45 centimeters uh, by 31 31 and a half 45 then um, these two parts have to be welded together and I have not made that drawing So the kiln has been packed very tightly, in this case with bamboo. If you are going to use bamboo to make a charcoal in this kiln, you will have to split it. You have to split it, if you don't split it, what happens is that there is a node here, inside it's hollow, so there is air inside. And if it goes inside, that air will start heating up and there will be an explosion BOOM! the bamboo will just explode of course uh, this is enough if there is a small crack in it it won't explode but if you have a bamboo with a bigger hole uh, like this piece for instance which is uh, very thin and a very big hole if it was a full node so much air it would just BOOM! explode in your kiln so it is very important to split it and it is now there's an opening still for the air to pass and it's now time to put the lid the lid has to be very nicely fitted neatly fitted and then sealed with clay so that is what I'm doing now putting clay on the seal
so now the kiln is properly sealed yes I'm convinced properly sealed check over here I did and uh, we let the clay dry for a very short time not fully dry and then we'll put the vermiculite the vermiculite as an insulator will cover everything so after one hour you can put the insulation material So now that the kiln has been properly uh, filled up with wood and insulated with uh, the vermiculite, we can start making the fire. But first, you need to check. You need to check uh, uh, if the thermometer is pr properly functioning. And so we have here the thermocouple and then uh, the thermometer. That was important because first we will start the fire. So here we are collecting the wood vinegar. What is wood vinegar? Wood vinegar is nothing else than the sap, the cell sap which is present in the matter that we have at present inside the kiln, it, which is bamboo. Although this bamboo is apparently totally dry, inside, inside the cells of the bamboo there will still be an amount of moisture. And with the high temperature that is now happening inside the kiln, this moisture in the cells will be pushed out. And it comes into the smoke, is uh, distilled in the distillation pipe and here drips out as wood vinegar. So the wood vinegar is nothing else than the cell sap. We have to store it at first for three months in bottles to let it sink, uh, all the impurities, tar and whatnot, to let it sink and then we can transfer it to bottles that we can use in the garden because since it contains all the cell sap that means all the nutrients that the plant has absorbed from air and soil is in fact in this uh, wood vinegar. The pH of the wood vinegar is about 2. It's very acid mm. and so you have to mix it with water and the rate 1 in 500 is best according to me but you can go up to 1 in 100. It is a uh, foliar feedant and at the same time it is also uh, phytosanitation. It protects, it's a kind of a protective uh, agent for the leaves of plants. But mainly it is used as a soil amendment or a foliar uh, feed it. Good one. There is no smoke coming out yet. I have not yet connected. And why are you spraying? Uh, because normally this pipe has to be 10 meters long to cool down the smoke. Mm. The smoke has to be cooled down. And this pipe is a little short. So if we spray cold water on this cloth, then the pipe will get cold, cooler, and the smoke will condense.
Why do we stop the wood vinegar at 120? Because after 120, there's too much tar. Too much tar. Yeah, before 80 degrees, you have uh, methyl alcohol, that means wood alcohol. And from 80 to 120, you have uh, wood vinegar. But after 120, around 120, the amount of tar that is being formed is too much. Mm -hmm. You could go higher to 150, but you will get so much tar. It's not worth it, unless you want tar, of course. It has gone up. Okay. It should have a slight metallic sound, but it has a woody sound. So that's okay. That's good. Is this charcoal used any differently? No, same. It's all the same. Yeah, everything will be burned. You know, it comes all out as charcoal. Yeah, it's very good.